We've now got a very simple back end, as well as a very simple front end using Vue and Urkel. Everything is currently read only, there's no updating of the state, and that's what we're going to focus on now. We're going to look at the mutation type and the input type, which is how you can update the state of your server. We've seen one top level type query, we're now going to see two more, mutation and input. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do is update our schema to have that new type, mutation. So let's go ahead and define a new mutation. These are going to be functions that update the state. I'm going to call my one create book. It's going to take an argument of a book input, which is going to be a book input type. It is going to be required, and we're going to return a book. It is a very common convention in GraphQL to return the data of the type you just created. In this case, we're creating a book, so we are going to return the book as well. We're now going to create a new input, which is going to be called a book input, and it's only going to have one field. The ID is going to generate automatically, we're just going to have a string for the input. Finally, let's go ahead and make sure we've done everything correctly by heading back to our graphical interface, and we should be able to get completion on our mutation here. We do have our create book here, it's going to have a book input with a type of title, which can be whatever you like, and this is going to return our book, which has an ID and a title. Of course this is not going to work because we haven't actually implemented our mutation, so let's go ahead and do that now. We are going to implement it down here, right underneath our app root level value. In this case we're going to have a create book, and the first argument for a mutation is going to be a little bit different to a query, it's going to be our input type. In this case our input type is called book input, so we're going to destructure it from our object inside of here, book input. We're not going to have a specific type for this right now. We could go ahead and define it, but we're going to end up duplicating our def definitions again. We're going to have a definition down here for the book input, and we're also going to have a definition up here. Again, the end goal is to unite both of these and have a single source of truth for all of our types. So rather than defining it now, I'm just going to go ahead and define it as an any type. The next thing we're going to do is have our second argument, which is going to be the context, and that's just going to be the type of context here. Let's go ahead and finish this one off now. All we need to do is update the state of our application, so we can go ahead and say context.app.books.push and push in our new data. We are going to generate the ID automatically, so it's just going to be context.app.books.length plus one, and that is going to be a string. We're also going to have the title, which is going to be the book input.title. Finally, this is going to give me an error. It thinks this is going to be read only, and the reason for that is because I'm using as const up here. We could go ahead and define an interface and get the correct type definitions, but since we're going to be deleting this code in a little bit when we start using Nexus, I'm just going to TS ignore it for now. Finally, we're going to return our newly created book, which is going to be context.app.books, and we're going to grab the very last one, which is going to be .length minus one. With a bit of luck, if we've done everything correctly, it's going to make this mutation, update our context and return our book. We can then run our query again, and it's going to return the new context books, which is going to include our newly created book, because that is in fact a global singleton up here. In practice, this would probably be a database or something like that. We're just using this as a very simple example. Anyway, let's save it off and give it a try. If I head back to my browser and run my mutation again, we are getting our newly created book here. And if I go ahead and query it again, we're getting both of our books in the response. So everything is now working correctly. Again, we are seeing the pain point of double duplication of our types. We'd have to declare our type declaration down here for our book input. and We also have it up here as well. You can imagine this is going to be very unmanageable in the near future. And that's why we're going to start using GraphQL Nexus to avoid this problem. Before we do that, let's go ahead and update our front end so we have a form to submit this mutation, and we're going to cover that one in the next lecture.